If you're someone who's easily frustrated by the complexities of Photoshop, you are in the right place. My name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based in Utah, and this is going to be the first video of the next few weeks where I'm going to be creating a video a week to create a little bit of a Photoshop crash course for landscape photographers, starting from the very first step of just opening the program. I know if a lot of you guys have probably tried Photoshop before um, and maybe not had the best results, it's obviously not quite as easy to use as many other photo editors such as a Lightroom, um, but however, it does have some really, really powerful features to it. There are a lot of things that you can do in Photoshop that you just can't do in Lightroom. Anything where you are merging photos together, like a focal length blend or a focus stack, as well as a lot of different photo effects and blurs and warps and things like that that you can't do in Lightroom, you're able to do in Photoshop. So it's well worth learning if you want to get full creative control over your images. Now, over the next few weeks, we're going to be covering a lot of different topics within Photoshop. But in this first video, we are just going to talk about setting up the work space in a way that makes sense. So I want you guys to follow along with me to set up your Photoshop workspace. I'll explain where everything is. We're going to move some things around and then we're going to save our custom workspace. So that way your screen is going to look exactly like mine. You're going to get rid of all the junk that you don't need because Photoshop has thousands of tools for things other than landscape photography. So we're going to get rid of everything that we don't need. So we just have what we need on the screen. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. Um, I'm starting, you can see first in Lightroom. I think a lot of you guys are probably already Lightroom users. And so you will be starting in Lightroom. So I'm going to show you how you would just go from square one from Lightroom to Photoshop, because a lot of people may not be aware. So you can have edited your photo here in Lightroom, done what you want to do. And then to open your image in Photoshop, you're going to hover over the thumbnail and right click or control click. You're going to go to edit in and then you're going to go to edit in Adobe Photoshop and then whatever year you have. It's going to take just a second to load. Now, sometimes a box will pop up prompting you uh, whether you want to edit the original file or a copy or edit the one with Lightroom adjustments. Always edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. If you've made adjustments there, that'll make it sure that you have those original edits into Photoshop. Now, when you load into Photoshop here, it probably looks something similar to this. To make sure we're all on the same page, go up to Window, Workspace, and then hit Essentials or Essentials Default, and then hit Reset. And then go to your toolbar, click on the three dots, edit toolbar, and you're going to restore defaults. That's just going to make it so we're all on the same page to start with. Now, within the workspace in Photoshop, you've got layers on the bottom right. This is very important. It's how Photoshop works. We'll be talking about layers in the next video, uh, but this one is really just about helping you get it set up. Then up here, you have another option of what you can put up here. Properties is a good thing to have. I'll show you how to add something else in just a second. And then you have your toolbar on the left and then you have your toolbar menu on the top of the screen. So whatever tool you have selected, you will see the menu for that tool up here. So all of the adjustments to make to that tool will be right here. Um, and then in your layers right here, you can click on your layer and you have the properties of the layer here. So if you have an adjustment layer, like a brightness layer, you will adjust that here in the properties. It's all going to make a little bit more sense in a second, but let's go ahead and read the screen of everything we don't need so that it is this Photoshop is set up in the simplest way for us moving forwards. First thing I want to do, drag channels off. We're going to get rid of channels and we're going to get rid of paths and follow along. Pause if you need time to do this yourself, but get rid of that stuff so you just have layers. Um, personally, I like to drag this over a little bit, give my photo a little bit more room so it's a little bit larger. We're going to leave properties up there. Right here, you can see we have history. We can leave that there as well. A lot of people, uh, I personally don't, but if you are someone who likes to have the histogram while you're editing, you can go to Window, go down to Histogram, and then drag and drop it right over here, and then we'll close the navigator. We don't need that. Now you can go back and forth between histogram and properties. Additionally, you could put your histogram right here so you could just pop it open as you're editing. Now we're going to go over and adjust the toolbar. That's the next big thing that we want to edit. Um, people get really confused because there's all sorts of tools and there's really only like seven or eight that you need for landscape photography. So we're going to go to uh, click and hold and then we're going to click edit toolbar. Now, what we're going to do is get rid of all the tools that we don't need. When I say we're going to get rid of them, we're going to drag them into extra tools so that they appear under this pop out menu and they're not automatically in our way. We can't see them unless we open up this extra menu. That's going to help to just simplify things on the left side. So I know you don't know what most of these tools do, but just follow along as I do things. So we're going to get rid of the artboard tool 
and then both of the single row and single column marquee tool. You can put those together if you want. Um, we're gonna go through and get rid of the magnetic lasso tool and the selection brush tool. We're gonna go ahead and then drag these three tools up in here. Uh, the reason being because these are all selection tools, so I wanna keep them all in a one box so that it makes sense. I'm also probably gonna get rid of object selection. Uh, it's a kind of a new tool. I'm not super crazy about it, but some people might wanna try it, so you can leave it if you want. We're gonna go through and get rid of perspective crop, slice and slice select. Gonna get rid of frame. We're gonna get rid of everything here except for the eyedropper tool. Drag all that around. We're gonna go down. Um, we can keep the spot healing, remove, and the healing brush and the patch tool. I wanna get rid of content aware move, get rid of red eye. Now you've probably used some of these tools in Lightroom for spot healing. Whichever tool you like, you can keep that one and get rid of the rest of them. I'll leave all of them because I go back and forth between which one that I use. We'll go down here and we'll bring the clone stamp up into our healing tools. We want all of our healing tools in one place and we'll get rid of pattern stamp. We're gonna get rid of pencil, we're gonna get rid of color replacement, we're gonna get rid of the mixer brush, we're gonna get rid of both of the history tools, get rid of all of the eraser tools, get rid of the paint bucket, get rid of all the blurs sharpen and smudge, get rid of the adjustment brush, we're gonna get rid of dodge burn and sponge, we're gonna get rid of all of the pen tools, all of the type tools, uh, both of the selection tools there and all of the shapes. We'll go down and get rid of the hand and the tool that's under it, as, and then we'll probably get rid of zoom as well. I like to use command plus and command minus when I zoom in. Now you can see we have much fewer tools over here, and these are all tools that we are potentially going to use. And we can also um, drag the elliptical marquee and the rectangular marquee in with the, the quick selection tools here. They're all part of one, like they're all selection tools. We're gonna use them all for the same thing. You can hit done now, you can see the left side has far fewer tools, and these are just tools that we will actually need to use. So we've got rid of all that stuff we don't need. If you do, for some reason, come to a spot where you need to access those, press and hold here, and you can see you have all of your tool options here. Um, you can click Edit Toolbar and then save your toolbar as a preset. You can call this, like, uh, I'll call this YouTube, you, oops, YouTube Video Toolbar. We'll hit save. That way in the future, if we ever accidentally make some mistakes, do something like that, we can just click load preset and click on our toolbar just like that. Now our workspace is looking pretty good. I don't think there's anything else that I like to have here, but if there is something that you might like, you could find it here in the window. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'll use things like actions, so I'll put that on the sidebar over here. Um, or if you have like a plugin, like a luminosity mask plugin, you'll put that over here as well. Uh, if you don't know what that is, then no worries. Once you're done, you'll go to workspace and you will save your workspace. And I'm gonna call this YT Video Workspace. And we're going to check menus and toolbar, click save. Now the benefit of doing that is I can't tell you how many times I've worked with clients where they accidentally click and drag something and they close this down and they open up something new and their screen is all messed up. They're like, oh shoot, what happened to my properties? Where can I get it? Simply just go back to window workspace and then go to reset YT video workspace or whatever you called it. That will reset everything. So that's kind of the setup here in Photoshop. Hopefully that all makes sense. Like I mentioned, we've got toolbar on the left. We've got the toolbar menu on the top. So if I select the brush, you can see it gives me different settings than if I select the clone stamp or the eyedropper tool. Um, so, and you'll learn uh, over time all of the different settings for each of the different tools. But for now, just know that uh, this is where you go to adjust any of the tools that you're using. And then on the right side of the screen, we've got layers, which again, we're gonna talk about in the next video. It's a key part of Photoshop. And then above that, we've got properties. Properties are going to show off whatever uh, is, oh, they're going to show the properties of the layer that we have selected. Um, and then over here, we have the histogram if you want to open that up. And then I have the history tool uh, to go back if I make a mistake. And then I have my actions as well, which you probably don't have any actions yet, but you might in the future. That covers the setup to the workspace. So that's the setup for Photoshop. That's exactly what I use when I edit my photos. Of course, you still don't know how to edit in Photoshop, but we're gonna dive into that next week. We're gonna start talking about layers, which are a really important part of Photoshop here. 
Um, so if you guys like this video and you're looking forward to this course, uh, if you're watching this shortly after it came out, the rest of the videos won't be out yet. If you're watching this in the future, all the videos might be out either way. I'm going to link those videos as they come out week by week. Um, otherwise, make sure that you subscribe to my page so you get notified when the new videos come out every single Saturday. Of course, let me know down in the comments if there's something in particular you have questions about or something in particular you want me to cover. I've got a rough idea of the videos I want to cover for this course, um, but nothing is set in stone yet. So please do let me know if there's something that would be helpful or something you'd like to see covered. Otherwise, again, my name is Austin James Jackson. Thank you guys so much for being here. Welcome to my course. I really hope that the next few videos are going to be super helpful for you guys. We'll see you guys next week.